How fun is it for an amateur dad like me to try to capture something that's about 64 million miles away? Moving at 17,500 miles per hour? No, not my kids. But I tried to snap a picture of the comet Neowise to show the kids and was ecstatic that I could. Hi, this is David of Tech for Baba, the channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Twenty twenty has been a very challenging year so far, making the newly discovered comet Neowise an especially bright spot in the sky. It won't return for another sixty eight thousand years and can fizzle out at any second. Like me, you may have seen awesome pictures of the comet over Toronto, New York, Taipei, or the Stonehenge. After some quick research, Googling, I was excited that I may be able to capture it just around my house, even though I live in a populated area. Even better, for the next few days or even weeks possibly in the northern hemisphere, I could see it in the evening, which is much easier for me than getting up early in the morning. In today's video, I'll show what I did to capture it just from my backyard with my Tamron 17 to 28 lens, the new Tamron 70 to 180 millimeter lens, and even my iPhone. Perhaps you can too. I highly recommend giving it a try. First, I needed to find where and when the comet will appear exactly. Thankfully, there are many websites and apps to help me out with that. I will link a couple below. I found a great free app on iPhone called Sky Guide. Like many other astronomy apps, you can just point the phone up in the sky and the screen will show where the stars with the constellation superimposed. Here was my night sky on July 18th at 9.30 p.m. for example. The comet will be in the same direction of the Big Dipper and just below it. Since my area is quite populated with houses and light pollution, even though you are supposed to be able to, it was hard for me to see the comet with my naked eyes. I went out for a few nights without success and almost gave up. I'm so glad I didn't. On with the app telling me where the comet should be, I took a few shots with my wide-angle Tamron 70-28 lens first and was so excited to see a little star with a tail in the picture. I then used my Tamron 70-180mm to lens to just get a little bit closer. Let me share what worked for me. First, use a tripod to securely set up the camera. Then use manual focus to focus on infinity. I find what worked best for my Sony a7R 3 and the Tamron lenses is to turn the focus ring until it first switches over to infinity, not anymore. To not get the trails of the stars in the photo, use the 500 rule. Basically, the shutter speed needs to be shorter than 500 divided by the focal length used. For example, at 180 millimeters, my shutter speed should not be longer than about 2.7 seconds. I found 2 to 1.3 seconds work well at 180 millimeters. At first, I thought longer exposures is better to have lower ISO for less noise. But once I zoom into the stars in those long exposure pictures, I could see the trails even at 6 seconds at 180 millimeters. Wow, I actually captured the Earth rotating, which is amazing in itself too. Following the 500 rule, use the widest aperture f2.8 for my lens. I adjusted the ISO to get the right exposure. I try ISOs as low as possible to avoid noise. I use between 400 to 500. The pictures may be darker, but I can slightly bring the exposure up in post. Lastly, I use the 2 second delay timer to avoid shaking the camera when I press the shutter. A remote shutter would work too. Common Neowise is bright enough. I was even able to capture it with my iPhone 11 Pro. I just simply use the night mode with 10 second shutter. The night mode on these latest smartphones are quite impressive. The technical advancements of camera sensors, lenses, software, and artificial intelligence have made it much easier for amateurs like me to see and capture the sky. Having said that, don't stick to any predefined settings. Be prepared to experiment with the settings, the lens, the camera, and the light conditions, the clearness of the sky, and the brightness of the comet all play a big part. But that's all part of the fun. I read that I can try tracking and stacking many photos together with software to reduce noise even further. Even after Comet Neowise is long gone, I can see myself exploring astrophotography more to capture the beautiful sky God has created in years to come. But for now, don't miss it, it'll be gone soon. Get out there with your kids and your cameras to capture this comet of the decades. 
wishing you and your kids as much fun as we had with this very special visitor in the sky. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please smash the like button and share. Let me know in the comment section below if you have more tips for everyone. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.